So welcome to this video about uh, hooking up my new Thermia heat pump uh, to the magic mirror and getting all the data that we need uh, from it. And we will also be able to control some of the settings in the pump. So welcome and hope you enjoy. So here is my new uh, Thermia Calibra. Uh, it's actually a dual uh, installation because the, the ceiling height is so low. So I have to have a uh, separate uh, for the hot water and for the um, uh, compressor for the heat pump. Uh, and there are two things I want to do. I want to connect the network. I have a network cable here. Uh, and I want to connect an indoor thermal uh, temperature sensor as well. And I will explain more later. So let's open it up. So this inside. And let's grab the network cable first. It needs to go here you see it here and it's blinking so it's connected uh, for the indoor sensor I'm going to open it up To be on the safe side, of course, you should turn this one off. Here's my two wire for the temperature sensor. It's a PT1000 uh, sensor resistor, so it doesn't matter where to connect the cables. Okay. There, the mirror connected. Let's close this up. This one. Not more quiet and the lid is back on. So there are two things I want to uh, configure. Uh, first of all um, we need to configure the room sensor and then we want to enable the Modbus TCP IP uh, so we can communicate with the heat pump. Uh, I need to turn off the heat pump to be able to um, so let's turn it off like that and now I will be able to access the installation menus so I click on the lock and then hopefully you have your access code or you have to try with the default one like this and now we have in the menu settings we have an installation menu and here we can do a lot of settings um, but what I want to find is the BMS as you can see it's already turned on here and this is what will enable my Modbus in the system so this is the first thing we need to do then if we go back uh, we can also see that we have um, the room sensor here uh, and it's enabled uh, but it's in passive mode the second uh, switch here 
And the reason for that is that I'm actually not using the room sensor right now to control the heat pump. I'm only monitoring the temperature. And that's for several reasons. It's, it's not the recommended way to have an indoor sensor at all. Uh, you should rely on the outdoor sensor and your heat curves uh, to adjust your heat pump. Uh, but I want to test this because in some cases my house retains the heat for a long time. So I'm hoping that it might help a bit to, to get a more stable temperature if I use this one. But right now it's set to passive mode. So if we go back again and go to the second page, we can see that we now have a menu option called BMS. If we click on that, there, there, uh, this is where you actually enable uh, your Modbus. And you have two selections for Modbus. You can select between RTU, which is the serial based, and TCP IP. And we can also see the port that will be used for the TCP IP communication. So I am happy with that. I will go back. Let's have a, a look at the heat curve as well. While we are in the menu, if we go into heat, and we can see that we have this symbol here. And this is the heat curve in my pump right now. Uh, and what you can do is that you can select the base curve and then you can also individually adjust the, the settings here. And this is your uh, supply line temperature, your, your uh, radiator temperature, uh, depending on the outdoor sensor. So it will not regulate against your indoor temperature at all actually. It, it's just using the outdoor temperature and your heat curve. So you need to get that in balance before you even consider to use an indoor sensor. What the indoor sensor will do then is it will just adjust the heat curve up and down. Uh, and we can actually see this if we remember a bit of the values here, minus two, minus one, minus three, and we go back. And then you can see that right now my setting is 19 degrees. So if I would raise it to 20, you would believe that it would uh, uh, make sure it's 20 degrees inside, but that's actually not the case. What's happening is that the heat curve is adjusted. You can see that everything has moved up three steps. So for every degree you change your heat pump, the heat curve mo moves up and down three steps. That's the only thing that happens. Uh, and the same thing goes with um, indoor sensor. If you have that enabled, it will only affect how much the heat curve moves up and down. So if, if the temperature is too low, it will regulate the heat curve uh, up a bit. Uh, so that's why it's so important to have control of your uh, heat curve first of all, uh, and make sure that you have a balance in the system. And now we can uh, turn on the heat pump again. Let's do that. How to this. Now let's check to see if we can communicate with the heat pump. So before we start, I will tell you a bit about why I was actually replacing my old uh, heat pump. Uh, the new one is a Thermia Calibra Echo. Uh, and it is using new green technology and it's also extremely efficient. Uh, but the real reason why I was um, replacing it is uh, we need to have a look at the data sheets. So this is the old pump that I had. It's uh, 17 years old. And if I just look at the data sheet for it, uh, I can see that if I put in 2.7 kilowatts into it, I will get out 8.7 kilowatts. And this gives me a COP factor of 3.2. And if we look at the new one, we can see that if we're running on a 
radiator system, which I am, I have a cup factor of 4.3. So already here, I will be saving a lot of energy just uh, putting in a new one. Uh, but it's even more savings for me because what I found out was that this old uh, pump was actually using more kilowatts hours. Uh, and it was quite a lot more, so in some cases it went up to even 5 kilowatts. Uh, and the reason for that is probably because the compressor was old and needed to be replaced. And uh, that costs quite a lot of money. So I decided, uh, given these two things, I had to replace it. And um, I don't regret it because I actually reduced my energy consumption with 50% doing this. So just a cup factor change is a 34% saving, and then the old compressor as well. So more than 50% uh, I have saved doing this. So it's time to start coding in Python. Uh, but before we get started, I need to tell you about the library that I'm using. You will find it in GitHub. It's a Python Genesis. Uh, Genesis is the name of the controller that is in the Thermia heat pump. Uh, and first of all, you need to install it. And you have the command here to install the library. Uh, and then we also need to install the async IO library since um, uh, the Python library uses that as well. So let's uncomment these two. Uh, and then we need a couple of uh, variables. So let's uncomment that part as well. You can see here at the top that I have the IP address and the port of the heat pump. Uh, since we're using uh, Modbus TCP IP, this is the default port for that access. Uh, the T data variable I will use to, uh, when I get all the information I want from the heat pump, it will be stored temporarily in that uh, variable. So you will see that. So let's move down to the main. and I'll comment the heat pump function. Same as the others, it will be running as a background uh, thread and it will be uh, pulling the heat pump every 10 seconds. So let's have a look at the actual function. It's uh, quite simple actually, um, since we're using the library uh, the first command here is what's doing it. Uh, it will run uh, until all data has been retrieved from, uh, from the heat pump. And I will show you where to specify that. The other code here is just to store it in my HP class uh, in the way that I want it. And you can see that the T data structure will hold information in um, that I have decided to, to retrieve from the heat pump. And moving down, just storing all the data. And then I have also a part here uh, where I is checking if um, the heat pump has generated any alarms. Uh, and if it has, I will retrieve the information about what alarm it has received. So I can print that uh, on my medic mirror. And then we move down to the um, async function here. Uh, and this is actually from the library example code. So I have not done so much here. Uh, it's connecting to the heat pump and it's 
retrieves all of the parameters. And this is actually the list of the parameters that you want to retrieve from the heat pump. Uh, it's quite a few here, but uh, there is a lot more in the, in the controller, so you can get even more information. So these are the ones that I want to retrieve, uh, and you only put the ones that you want uh, in this structure. There is, you, you can of course retrieve all as well, but I don't see any point in that, because this is what I will use. And this function uh, will complete, then I will have all the data in the uh, tData variable. So uh, to understand what information you can get from the heat pump, there are some documentation online for Modbus and uh, Genesis platform. And I will put the link in the description. And here you can see what data you can retrieve and what you can um, also write. So we have a quick look here. You see uh, different uh, setups. You can use Modbus both serial on TCP IP. You have the board rates. And you have also a long list of all the information that you can get from the system. So you will see it's a quite a lot of information. I would say not all of this information is actually available. I have seen that uh, some of the registers are empty, uh, depending on the configuration of your system. For example, uh, I couldn't find any electric meter uh, values at all in my uh, Thermia, and I tried to to get hold of somebody that could tell me if it was a module missing or something, but I couldn't get that, so I ended up putting an external um, energy meter for this. But otherwise, you can get all the temperatures, all the statuses, uh, and so on. And there are quite a few things that you can actually control as well, turning on and off and, and setting uh, different temperatures and all of that. So we have, if we have a look at the um, function here, you can see that there are a few lines that I have commented out. And this is um, function uh, features that I will be using later on. Uh, and this is to control different things in the heat pump. At the moment, I don't control anything, but I will be able to turn on and off the pump. I will be able to set change the temperature uh, settings for the pump and so on uh, and I will use that to control uh, when the heat pump is actually running monitoring energy prices uh, and other stuff uh, and that will come in later videos but if you want to get started with um, uh, writing data to your pump it's really easy because you just use the async set function instead, and then you can control uh, those registers that, of course, are possible to control. So just wanted to let you know that. So before we start um, the code, we want to make sure that we have data returned to the web page, of course. And in this case, I have actually added uh, some more code to my main page here. Uh, and this is to show if there are any alerts from the heat pump. Then I want to show a clear banner on, on my magic mirror. And um, I want to sh show what type of uh, message it is as well. Uh, I've also added an additional warning that is um, tells me that it's time to uh, clear out the filters. And I'm sensing this depending on the, on the temperature difference of the outgoing incoming water. Uh, and then we need the data itself here. So returning the values from my uh, HP class that I want to present in some way on the Edic mirror. And as usual, we will also add it to the index page 
for debugging here, a bit more values here. Then we move to the HTML code. Uh, and here I want to position it using a style here. Called heat pump, and then we have the actual information. This, uh, and I will be showing different values uh, depending on different statuses of the heat pump. For example, if the heat pump is not running at all, I will simply hide all of the information, and I will show the alerts if they come up and if I get alarms from the heat pump. So let's see if this runs. And here we go. You can see the part to the right here. Heat pump information, I'm showing the delta temperatures for both the brine and for uh, the, the heating going out to the radiators. Showing the temperature of my tap water. And also I'm showing that it's actually heating now and it's running at 28% of the capacity. Um, if it's... Um, Changing to heating up the tap water instead, it will also show that here. And if it's not running at all, all of this will just be hidden, disappear. It's quite nice. I want to show you the index page as well, because here I have a lot more values from the heat pump uh, that I want to use or monitor in some sense. Uh, first of all, I have the temperature of the brine in the collector. Uh, this is what goes into the, the pipes that I have in the ground. Uh, I have the temperatures, you have the status of the brine pump, it's running. I have the circulation pump, which is on the condenser side with the uh, radiators. And, and the water circulating to the radiators and to the um, water heater. I monitor the compressor. And here I can see how many hours the compressor has been running for, what could be good to have. I can also see the percentage since it's uh, not just turning on and off, it's regulating the, the speed of the compressor. You can see both how the percentage of, uh, of maximum speed, and you can see the rotation speed as well, and you can see if it's running. And then we have the condenser pump and the speed of the condenser pump as well. Uh, extra heater is if, I, uh, if the pump for some reason doesn't work and I need to activate the, the electric heaters in the I have actually turned that off completely, so it will never start. Uh, we can see the heat curve, uh, pressures, indoor sensor, temperature. We have which mode, if it's running, uh, if it's heating, if it's uh, not active, or if it's heating uh, my water. Uh, we have the outdoor temperature. And we have the return and supply. So here return, supply, and the requested supply temperature. And this is of the of the circulation, the radiator circulation. We have the temperature that I have set, and this is what I will use to regulate up and down. Uh, and also we have the temperature of the tap water and for how many hours the 
it has been used to heat the tap water. So as you see a lot of information here but there is still a lot more uh, that you can get from the heat pump. So I started to think about how to control the heat pump depending on most of the price. Um, so today I have a fixed price but I will probably be moving to a hour by hour price soon. And when I do this uh, a typical day could look like this that you have very low prices during the night and then uh, during the hours when people get home from work and so on the prices are very high uh, and what I want to do is to regulate my use of the heat pump and the heating um, to the hours when the price is low um, I actually started to test a bit about actually turning off the heat pump for several hours, but then I found out that it uh, became too cold uh, quite quickly. So I decided to use another method. Um, I'm going to adjust the uh, norm temperature. Uh, so if, if the price is above, uh, for example, 1.5 sec, uh, divide it by 10 to get it in euro then I will lower the temperature with one degree and if it's above three sec then I will lower it by two degrees but then I will also make sure that I always run the heating for at least 12 hours per day uh, so I don't so it doesn't get too cold uh, and, and in my house is quite uh, well it's not so well insulated in some areas and that means that when every, every time it is a bit windy outside um, it will affect the temperature indoors quite a lot so I was also thinking about adding an adjustment for the wind and here I would do it the other way around so I will actually increase the temperature with one or two degrees depending on how much wind we have. Uh, so even if the price is high and it's uh, very windy outside, I will uh, basically end up with 20 degrees as, as it will become uh, minus two and plus two degrees. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. And, and the whole point is to stay away from the areas uh, where we have very high prices. It will not affect it too much, uh, but if this works well, then maybe I can stretch it a bit and, and lower and uh, raise the temperatures a bit more, or for more hours during the day. Uh, and I will be controlling all of this from uh, from the magic mirror. So I just wanted to test the um, settings for reducing the temperature when the energy prices was high. Uh, as you can see, I ended up uh, with a quite low temperature. It's cold inside now. So I just wanted to let you know that the um, test with adjusting the temperatures was actually okay. Um, I did some modifications about the trigger values and so on, and now it's waking working quite good. It's not saving a lot of energy, but it's saving some energies. And, and if the energy prices go up to crazy things like 7 sec per, per kilowatt hour, uh, then, then it will really make a difference. So um, I will continue with that and, and both for the adjustment of the wind factor uh, and for the energy prices. Another thing I wanted to show you is that, um, I don't know if you noticed, but in the heat pump there were no values for energy consumption, how much energy, how much, uh, among, how many kilowatts was the, is the heat pump actually using. Uh, I thought that would be included in the heat pump monitoring, but it was not. Uh, so I decided to add a separate energy meter. And this will actually be in my next video. So, so look out for that. I will be adding a M 
bus energy meter and using that as a complement to the heat pump information. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoy. Thank you.